Greetings, Happy New Year, and welcome to TBAIBD. This is our very first interview for this year, and I have the pleasure of uh, interviewing Mr. Jimmy Khalil. He is a pencil artist, and uh, he works from Malaysia. Um, welcome to the program. Jimmy, how are you today? Hello, Philo. Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. having me. I love your uh, background and I love that hat, which is the signature of Jimmy Khalil. <laughs> I love to wear it. <laughs> okay. So Jimmy, um, you are a pencil artist and uh, tell me, you know, how did this career begin? You've, I've seen many sketches of you uh, of very important people, not just Malaysians, but also people from abroad. But perhaps you can start off uh, by telling me, is this something that uh, you worked for or is this a hobby? that uh, began very much earlier in your life? It started as a hobby when I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And it uh, mushroomed from there uh, by, by, by chance. I, I draw portraits because uh, a face is powerful because every line or curve tells a story of a life and the experiences that come with it. To capture this accurately is a challenge to me. And when I feel I've done a good job, uh, it gives me great fulfillment. Mm. So that's why I draw. <laughs> it's very exciting what you just said, uh, Jimmy, that every face has character. And uh, as a pencil artist, uh, yes. it, you know, capturing uh, pictures or faces of people. Uh, and that involves uh, capturing a lot of your life as well, right? The lines on your faces. Or the smile oh, yes. that you might have, you know, like the Mona Lisa, for instance, you know, the actual uh, capturing of that moment. So yes. tell me what inspired you uh, to go into this. Okay, a huge challenge uh, working in both the government and private sectors after completing my higher studies. After many years down the road, I decided to use my pencil strokes to define my fate. And I haven't looked back since. My artistic endeavors certainly beats uh, working as a draftsman in an architect firm, uh, working as, as an officer in a bank or at an embassy or a government agency. As for motivation, my work has taken me places locally and abroad, and I have since met many interesting faces like singers, movie directors, or judges. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in my life, I got to do something which brings me international recognition and job satisfaction. Fantastic. And I know that you have drawn many important people. I've seen a pencil sketch of Brooke Shields. I've seen a pencil sketches of some of the Malaysian judiciary. Now, these are important uh, people that you've sketched and also for important companies uh, in Europe, for instance, especially in Britain, uh, where you were there sometime. Now, can you share with us some of your best work or illustrations, um, Jimmy? Oh, uh, I recently did a, 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 a drawing titled Music of My Mind. It showcases uh, an Orang Asli, indigenous people of Malaysia, playing the mouth flute. Uh, I like music, so music brings up all sorts of emotions. With it, we can dream, have fun and create. Music has a healing power to me. Mm. It has the ability to keep people out of their selves and yeah, enjoy. <laughs> and not every artist can uh, play music. You are a pianist as well and a guitarist. So is that uh, you know, a combination of uh, art, of the arts, you know, because you are an artist as well as a musician? Is it something which is uh, all self-taught, like your uh, pencil art? Oh, yes. It's all self-taught. I, I love to play the piano uh, and the guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, I, after having devoted several hours of my art. Okay, I want to come back to your uh, art as, as it is, you know. Um, tell me what are some of your most uh, exciting or most memorable uh, piece of work that you've done, uh, Jimmy? Okay, um, I do a lot of portraits actually, and um, there are some special moments. There were in the past, uh, for example, at 14 in 1980, I sketched a portrait of US singing star Donny Osmond and presented it to him as a surprise gift when I got invited unexpectedly uh, to meet his entire family in their hotel room during their concert in KL. 
Hmm. He was so impressed that he signed my portrait and so did Sister Marie. <laughs> and while I was in the UK, I did a portrait of one of Britain's renowned playwrights, Sir David Hare, and managed to deliver it to him. Mm -hmm. I got to meet interesting faces, I must say. And I got to meet Paul Freeman. Uh, he's one of Britain's well-regarded actors. He's known for playing the rival archaeologist, Wendy Belloc, in the first Indiana Jones movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, you said you started drawing at the age of 13, especially portraits. What made you, what was the first piece of work that you did at the age of 13? Who did you draw? <laughs> Who did I draw? <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be surprised. Uh, it was John Travolta because my sisters, they were big fans of John Travolta and, mm -hmm. and they asked me whether I could draw his face, which I did. Inserted from there. <laughs> wow, okay. So it was a Saturday night inspiration. Uh, <laughs> so to it? speak, it was, it was in the 70s. So, awesome. Okay, so um, drawing and something, drawing, sketching, um, you mentioned painting as well. Are yes. you talking about uh, oil on canvas or uh, are you talking about what kind of painting are you talking about here? Uh, oh, yes. Um, I do paint by using oil in, in acrylic because um, I try to inject something new in each project. I've actually worked on a movie magazine in the UK, which mm. was called uh, New Empress. It, it ran from 2011 until 2014. Mm. So I was the contributing illustrator for mm. about three years, where I got a chance to use watercolor besides using pencils and whatnot. Yeah. You've also done illustrations for some important work in the UK. If I'm yes. not mistaken, you've done a book uh, with lots of illustrations of yours. And yes, so today, it's, uh, it's been kept and shared with a lot of people. Jimmy, you're very modest. Thank you so much. I, I'm grateful for the chance uh, given me in the past. I, I treasure all those moments. Okay. So tell me, um, you know, how do you judge that a work is good? How many times do you actually draw? Like if I ask you to draw somebody or sketch someone, how, how long does it take you to draw that person or that individual? Uh, it, it depends on, uh, I use photos as a source of reference. Mm. So it depends on the sharpness of the photo. The sharper it is, the longer it takes for me to, to draw. So which do so, you prefer, looking at a photograph and sketching an individual? Or uh, you want someone to pose for you and then you take their, you draw their picture? I, I, I prefer to, to use photos as, as a reference. Why? Does it actually show the actual person's expression? Yes, it does. I mean, I've and heard about artists looking at people and then, you know, they start sketching. But you're saying I, that you'd rather look at a photograph. Yes, I am by nature a reclusive person. <laughs> I would withdraw into myself from the company of others so that I can draw comfortably. Mm. Well, most of the time. <laughs> okay, okay. So what do you think? Um, people always talk about uh, art having a soul or a picture having a soul. Uh, how do you define that? Like when you draw somebody, right? When you sketch a face, how do you bring out that soul of that individual? How do you capture the soul so that it's not just a static piece of uh, art that's sitting there in the table, on the table? Yes. Uh, the work comes from your passion. Hmm. That is what a colleague is. We are all a cult. Everyone has a calling. So uh, if you, as an artist, you have, you have to know what sparks the light in you hmm. in, in, in being an artist hmm. so that you may just uh, illuminate those around you hmm. with your work. Okay. How do you describe a, a person, right? Like, for instance, as an artist, as a pencil uh, artist as well, and also a person who has done oil, um, and uh, crayon or, you know, other kind of uh, mediums that you use for your paintings. Um, what do you think is the most difficult part about a human's face that you find difficult to capture? What is the most challenging um, face or angle that uh, you have to work with? I would say the eyes. Uh -huh. as the eyes are the windows to a person's soul. As they say, they have stories to tell. Hmm. So the eyes. TV AIBD.
a platform connecting the world virtually, bringing to your screen a plethora of real-time informative content. Everything from the latest trends in immersive technologies, regional media stories, insight from world leaders, and industry intelligentsia. Empowering broadcasters worldwide. Connect with TV AIBD now. Connecting the world. How much time do you take, uh, Jimmy, to draw a face? 10 hours or so. Is it continuous it work? Do you do uh, it continuously? I could, draw, I, I could draw six hours straight. But again, it depends on my mood. I have to feel the soul of the of the drawing before I submit to my client. I have to like it before How I give it away. That? How do you get that soul of the feeling? You know, do artists look at the picture for very long before they actually start sketching? Is there something that you study? The facial features of the individual, you know, like the oh, yes. structure it, or um, how do you study this? Um, it's best if I get to know the client before I draw. Mm -hmm. then um, perhaps I could inject the soul into the drawing. <laughs> yes, of course. So, you know, I'm talking to Jimmy Khalil. He's a pencil artist and he has drawn um, a lot of uh, important people. And uh, Jimmy, you've been working with the Malaysian judiciary. And uh, yes. how is it? You know, I often see you going to the Malaysian uh, courts. And uh, do you sit and draw these people or is it again working with pictures? Uh, I work with pictures. I am um, I'm the resident artist for the yearbook since 2010. Mm -hmm. And my, my job is to draw portraits of judges, only judges, for the yearbook, which has been ongoing since, uh, yes, the past 10 years or so. So I got lucky, actually. So it's, uh, it wasn't an overnight thing because it started um, it's sometime in the 90s, where, mm -hmm. where about I, I was asked to draw portraits of um, of the late uh, Sultan of Perak at the time, and uh, was also a former king, our king, and he was also the former Lord President and the Vice Chancellor of the University. So um, it started from there, and uh, the commission worked from the judiciary. Um, that was given to me some ten years later, almost a decade later. And I've been their resident artist for the past 10 years. So it's a long way. It's a journey. <laughs> and what do you, it's, congratulations on that, because I've seen some great works that you've done uh, with the judiciary. And uh, when you're drawing such important people, you know, these are the people who you're talking about, the attorney general, you're talking about law presidents. Uh, what are some of the thoughts on your head that you try to capture from these important individuals? I'll try to get, the best angle I could, and um, and if I if I could, uh, mm -hmm. would spend some time with them and mm -hmm. get to know them better, so that I can inject the soul into the drawing. But it's not easy. <laughs> Normally, I only have the photos to deal with. Okay. So so I just figure it out. <laughs> uh, in this interview, and I want to ask you about some of your exhibitions that you've held. Right? Yes. Or uh, planning to hold uh, with pencil art. Yes. Uh, I did one recently. Uh, it's about, it's called Music of My, of my Mind, which mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, that was a bit personal because uh, I, it's about a person who's playing a musical instrument and I could relate to it because mm -hmm. I, I play a few musical instruments. And uh, I chose and Orang Asli because uh, I wanted to highlight them. The indigenous, yeah, the indigenous people. The indigenous people, yeah. I wanted to highlight mm -hmm. the, the indigenous people in Malaysia. As, uh, I believe music is a universal language and we all could understand what it's all about. And uh, that was why I, I chose that individual. So how was it like? Do you sell your art pieces, uh, Jimmy? Do you have exhibitions and sell your artwork? Or is it just for a hobby? Or how do you take your art? Is, I, is it for sale? It's for sale, yeah. It's for sale. I got lucky though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I don't get to sell them most of the time. But, but that, is, that is the life of an, of an artist. You may not sell this time, but you may be able to sell it in the next exhibition. So... It's part of our life as an artist. Okay. What about um, your, your plans? And, and I'd like to ask you first about uh, the rising digital art 
Today, people are also doing pencil art, but they are using the digital medium. Okay, and um, so how do you, as a um, pencil artist, you know, spending hours on art, uh, feel about this digital art? Digital digital art is good um, for those who want to learn because we have all the tools uh, required in a in a in a, in the same program. Mm -hmm. But digital art is data. It may be able to capture the soul and essence because of the advance in technology, but traditional art is more valuable because every piece is original. Being an art, an, a, a traditional artist, uh, I prefer traditional art over digital art because everything is always different and unique because it's a physical creation, unlike digital art. Mm. And it's very exciting because uh, there's so much of uh, new things that are coming up with uh, digitization and uh, as an artist, you know, this is something that uh, you might be thinking. People, some people love uh, the digital angle, some people like the uh, traditional uh, aspect. But like I said, some things like capturing the soul and essence of an individual can only be done by another human uh, as compared to AI. Yes, I agree. But progress is is impossible without change. So I, I'm not opposed to it. As mm. George Bernard Shaw says, uh, progress is, in, is impossible um, if people are opposed to change. Mm -hmm. Change will not happen. Okay. Tell me what is one of your most um, exciting or uh, most important uh, faces that you've drawn? Over, over time, you know, you've started this from the age of 13. So we're talking about uh, four decades of uh, art there. <laughs> so, yeah. So what is the most exciting besides, uh, you know, the ministers or, or presidents or uh, who was the most exciting phase and the one that you love most uh, of all your art pieces? I love everyone, every single one of them. Every single artwork is special to me. Uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity and for allowing me to become an artist. I see. Okay, so what's your 2022 plan, uh, Jimmy? What do you have in mind? For me, to go far from the madding crowd, to look for peace and quiet, because I live in, in Kuala Lumpur. It's so, mm -hmm. it's so, so busy. For me, uh, I would travel far afield to just look and look because uh, I never know where I might, might end up with a picture. Only after doing it, I will discover what I'm trying to do. I do have the Maldives in mind, which is famous for its pristine beaches. And it's a, it's a place which is good for seascapes. And, uh, and of course, the, uh, the UK, where I had studied. For example, uh, Richmond, uh, a town southwest of London, uh, it offers rolling hills and a picturesque view of the River Thames. Uh, it was where I walk about as a student. Uh, sometimes uh, a lonely walk uh, offers you uh, peace of mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I enjoy that. I think uh, these are all beautiful uh, inspirations that you're having, uh, Jimmy. You know, artists always travel and artists always see new places, new faces, and you just don't focus on faces, but you also focus on buildings, on landscapes, seascapes, uh, yes. and, and, and uh, you know, the essence of the indigenous people that you mentioned, uh, and also music. So what can I say but that you are such a beautiful soul, you know, so perhaps we look at 2022 and look at some of the work that uh, probably you can do. Uh, together, perhaps, you know, we might uh, think of some new and interesting ideas as an illustrator. So Jimmy Kale is not just an artist, he's also an illustrator. He's also someone who works with portraits. And Jimmy Kale also does face masks. And, um, and Jimmy, you've uh, brought out the essence of Malaysia's own art, the batik, on your face mask. That's really oh, exciting. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it out. I forgot about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did. Uh, my face mask collection uh, due to the pandemic it was it was two years two years ago yeah, it was in Ooh. 2020 yeah. mm -hmm. the, the, the idea came up uh, when uh, uh, 
a school friend of mine came up with this fund to help those affected financially by the pandemic. Uh, I, I'm so happy because in the end I could contribute uh, profit from the sales of the face mask mm. to, to my friends who were affected. So it was the least I could do. So. And that was a beautiful piece of uh, face mask, that uh, whole collection that you did, Jimmy. And uh, Thank you so it went much. for a good cause. Yeah. Thank you so <laughs> much.